Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're well. Today's video is a little latest of favorites video. So let's hop right in. First up, Lural. That, oh, it landed the right way up, hooray. This is who gives a crap. They make bamboo loo roll, or should we say, bamboo loo roll. And I love it because it comes wrapped in paper packaging. For any of you guys who've tried to find loo roll without plastic packaging, then you'll know that the struggle is pretty darn real. So these guys donate 50% of their profits to building toilets in areas that don't have proper loos. They also don't use any chlorines, inks, or dyes. So the loo roll itself looks just like this, like a regular loo roll. Or is it? It's made from bamboo, 100% bamboo, which is not only a fast growing plant that doesn't really require pesticides, it's also said to have antibacterial properties too, which I think is no bad thing. And honestly, it feels really nice. This is a three ply loo roll, and I got this one because they'd sold out of the two ply, to be honest. So this was my only choice. And I bought a box of 48 loo rolls. So we'll see how long those last, but I'm hoping they'll keep us going for a while. Um, <laughs> the box is currently stuffed down behind an armchair in our living room. Now these guys are actually an Australian brand, but they did open up a UK dispatch location to trial it over here in the UK. And turns out, we think it's Bonza. These guys did so well in the UK that they sold out pretty quickly, um, but they are coming back. So they're having a relaunch in the UK. I think it's at the end of next month or soon, basically. Guys, what have you got to lose? Also, someone on my Instagram, after I posted a picture about who gives a crap, suggested that it would be a great idea to save some of these uh, wrappings from the loo roll and reuse them as gift wrap. And I was like, that is a great idea. So I have saved a few of these. I'm not gonna save all 48 of them, but I'm gonna save a few of them just in case I do need to wrap any gifts at any point throughout the year. Um, I'm not a huge gift giver, to be honest, and normally I just give them without wrapping, but uh, there will probably be the odd occasion when I do actually need to wrap something. So I thought, well, that's a great idea. Next up is this t-shirt, ooh, by Zero Waste Daniel. And it's made from scraps of organic cotton that have been saved and repurposed into this t-shirt. And I think it's really cool. So I've been following Zero Waste Daniel for a while on social media. He's a New York based designer and he's just really clever and creative when it comes to saving scraps of material that would otherwise be headed towards the landfill and he repurposes them and reworks them into some really cool garments. Because I personally try to avoid synthetic materials and I love to support organic cotton, I was extra, extra excited to find a t-shirt that was made using scraps of organic cotton. We all know I'm a t-shirt lover and I'm especially a white t-shirt lover. Um, so I know I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this. I like the kind of baggier fit and that I can roll up the sleeves as well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna really enjoy wearing this. Zero Waste Daniel, you're pretty awesome. So earlier this week, I got wasted. Yep, you heard right. <laughs> I went to a pop-up restaurant called Wasted and it's on the roof of Selfridges and the chef Dan Barber, you may or may not have heard of him, if you watch uh, The Chef's Table, which is a series on Netflix, he is in one of them. He's basically a very well-known chef who has a very well-known farm-to-table restaurant in New York. I think it's called Blue Hill and I've never been but I've heard great things about it and I'd highly recommend watching the episode of of the chef's table in which he features. Um, and he's come over to the UK for a month, but I think they're right at the end of their stint now. So I'm pretty sure it closes in the next day or two. In fact, it's probably already closed by the time this video goes up. So the entire menu was made up of waste food items and it was just really cool. And in fact, it wasn't just the menu that was based around waste items or waste products. The interiors of the restaurant as well were really beautifully designed and they were also made from 
waste items as well. So everything from the lampshades, which were made from, I think it was things like mushroom fibers to the furniture. All the cutlery was of course reusable. So were the napkins and there were no straws, folks, which I was super happy about. I even asked the waitress, do I even need to ask for no straw with my drink? And she said, no, we, we don't do straws here. So I was really, really, pleased with that. Um, so we had some really cool food. I'll try and remember what we had. So I started with a drink called the Arnold Palmer, which was made from fruit offcut cordial and second flush tea. And it was really nice actually, really refreshing. And we also had a bread basket where the bread had been made using uh, milk waste from the baristas section of the E5 Bakehouse and it was delicious. Um, we also had, what else do we have? Fish and chips, which came with chunks of battered fish, but also the fish heads, the fish bones, the fish skin, as well as some battered seaweed as well. And it was delicious to the point where I actually ate three fish heads. My husband ordered the waste rare bit, which was stale ale bread, cheese trimmings, and off-grade apple chutney. And that was really good. It was slightly spicy. It was, I don't quite know how to describe it, but it was really, really yummy. I also ordered a sausage made from a waste fed pig. And we finished off by sharing a panna cotta, which was made with rejected shortbread. And it was, of course, absolutely scrumptious. So I actually saved the menu because I really liked how they had little drawings of where everything had come from. I actually think it was really cool that Selfridges hosted a pop-up restaurant like that, which highlighted uh, food waste. And Selfridges is somewhere that has actually started to take some really cool steps towards sustainability, I've noticed lately. They have a whole section about it on their website. They've currently got their material world going on, which is a focus on eight different designers who all use different sustainable materials as part of their collection. They've also removed all plastic water bottles from sale um, in Selfridges, which I think is really great as well. So I think sustainability is definitely on their radar and I'm really interested to see what else they've got planned in the future. Up next is this book, Modified by Caitlin Shetterly. And I read this really quickly. For me, I'm a slow reader, but I raced through this book. And it's her personal journey discovering more and more about GMOs after finding out that she has possibly got a sensitivity to genetically modified corn. Um, so she goes to meet uh, experts and scientists and people who are pro-GMOs and people who are anti-GMOs. So she looks at it from kind of all angles. This is something that I read quite a lot around and there were definitely some nuggets of information in here which I'd never heard about before and I think she raises some really interesting questions as well. So if this is a topic that you're at all interested in, I would highly recommend uh, checking out Modified. Up next is a documentary that I watched recently that I really enjoyed. It's called Sustainable, a documentary. One of you guys recommended it to me. Your name is Kai or KY. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Maybe it's Key. But you know who you are. Thank you so much for recommending it. It was totally the sort of documentary that I really enjoyed watching. The documentary looks at America's current industrialized food and farming system and how that has depleted the soil of nutrients and is dependent on things like pesticides. Um, and in the middle of all that, you've got this farmer who's doing things differently and he's brought biodiversity back to his farm and he's set up a community of like-minded farmers and they are working with restaurants who want to put some really cool interesting things on their menus and I just found it a really inspiring documentary and it kind of made me want to get into farming. My next favorite item is this bag. Oh no, there we go. Bag for change. This is made from surplus cotton and ugh, it's very cool, mainly because it's such a great size. Somebody actually stopped me recently in the street and said, your bag is a great size. Where is it from? They come in all sorts of different designs, but I really liked the navy and cream one. And uh, they actually sent this to me to try out. And honestly, I've used it every single day since I got it. It's just such a great size. Have I already said that? I've already said that. But let me tell you, 
the size is great. It also has a little pocket just in there so I can shove my keys in that section without having to kind of root around at the bottom to try and find them. Let's be honest, life isn't complete without a decent reusable cloth bag. This, my friends, is La Ava and they are a certified organic range of lotions and washes that has just launched a few weeks ago. And not only are the ingredients incredible, I also love that they come in glass bottles. Oh. They do have plastic pumps, but I know that the woman behind this brand is considering refill options. So we've got a wash and a lotion, and this scent is rosium, and it says geranium, pettigrain, and clove, and this one is blue, and it says blue chamomile, cedarwood, and vetiver. Now this is the 85 mils, this is the 500 mils. They come in varying sizes in each scent, and because they are certified organic, they only use essential oils as the fragrance. I've been using this every single day in the shower since I got it, and it's just been so nice to use. The smell is so good, and we know I'm pretty picky when it comes to smells. So I'm really pleased with that. And it's probably ever so slightly my favorite over this one, but this is also really nice. I've been putting this on my bedside table to use as a little hand moisturizer whenever I've had dry hands before bed. So exciting to see an organic beauty brand using really great packaging as well. So hooray. And finally, you know the saying, happy wife, happy life. I don't know if there's a similar one for husbands, happy husbands. I don't know. But this final favourite is kind of one of my favourites because it makes my husband happy and they are a pair of boxer shorts. They're made from GOTS certified organic cotton and I found them on green fibres and I bought one pair to begin with just to see if he liked them because underwear is quite personal. So he tried them out and I think he was actually really pleasantly surprised. I phoned him up before filming this video and I was like, what words do you have to say about those boxer shorts? And he was like, they're just really comfortable, they feel lovely, and he was very impressed with them. He's now got several pairs of these boxer shorts. They come in both black and cream, which, which is kind of like an undyed cotton, if that makes sense. So there you go, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed already and you're thinking about it, I would highly encourage you to hit that red subscribe button. It will change your life in probably very few ways, but. I'd still encourage you to hit it. It'll feel as good as these pants do. Oh my goodness, final favorite, not eco-related at all, Beauty and the Beast, the live action movie. It was just so good.